Now there's one person here at Hampton Court who's more familiar to the nation's children than to the gardening audience. Dominic Wood has been a famous face in the world of children's television for many years. He's one half of the CBBC duo Dick and Dom. <laughs> Since his own school days, Dominic has been passionate about gardening and Hampton Court is his local show. So last week he invited us to take a look round his garden. Gardening for me has been uh, extraordinarily helpful. Um, I've got a very chaotic uh, brain and mind. It works over time and gardening is the only place, literally the only place that can switch my mind off and it doesn't think about anything else, not one other thing. And if it wasn't for that, I'd be in a right mess. <laughs> so here it is, my garden. I wanted to take a small space and do as much with it as I possibly could. And what else I had to do is factor in my two kids. You know, I had to make it a space that was enjoyable for them to be in as much it is for me to be in as well. Now, I know a lot of people who are my age, mid 30s, who are into gardening would be a lot more about designer gardens, but because my mum and dad and my grandparents taught me everything about gardening, actually, I quite like the classical gardens. This is my little chill out section, and I've got kind of very um, rich foliage around here. We've got lots of hostas, and I absolutely love hostas when they haven't been uh, attacked by the slugs and snails. Um, we've got this Tropicana, which is, which is great because it's uh, this really deep purpley red, which offsets uh, all the rest of the green around me. Loads of aces, the water feature, um, got a cordyline. Uh, it's just got a really nice feel about it. It's just nice and calm. Now, this time of year is one of my favorite times because everything's starting to go into bloom. Now my borders are absolutely stuffed to the gills. You've got your osteospermums, which are brilliant. They just keep giving and giving and giving. Pansies, violas, I've planted them what, in March, and they last the whole year. They literally keep going and going and going. Um, at the back, for height, verbenas. I planted this one when I first arrived and it's cultivated on its own. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. A good marguerite just to pad it out. You know, it's nice to have something that isn't a big, bright, vibrant color. Otherwise you look like you've got a technicolored raincoat everywhere. Another agapanthus. Look at them. I told you to come out for the filming. You haven't. <laughs> Over here, I've got this, um, this tree, and when I first moved here, I think it was just on its way out. And I was toying around with the idea of, of cutting it down, but it's actually proved quite useful for turning into something I can hang these hanging baskets off and these uh, little pots. Over on this side, I've got quite a lot more, more height going on in this board out. The finches love this area because they use this pyracanthus um, for two things. Firstly, to be safe from predators. And also, you can see here, these are eventually gonna become uh, really bright red berries, which they eat. So they can stay inside the pyracanthus, eat food without getting attacked. So they love that. And over here, we've got a buddleia, uh, which butterflies will be all over. Ideally, I'd kind of like a lot more and a lot more different species arriving here. So part of my reason to go to Hampton Court is to try and see uh, what I can do and what there is to get for my garden to encourage more butterflies to here. Now, there isn't that much left to do in this garden because it's so small and I've kind of achieved a lot of what I wanted to do. But um, this is an idea that I think would be really interesting, is to take this just normal felt roof and turn it into a living roof. So it would uh, become part of the garden instead of a shed just plonked in the garden. I went to Hampton Court for the first ever time last year. Um, it was great, but I did have my kids with me, so I spent the whole time running around after them. It wasn't ideal. So this time, I'm gonna go on my own just walk around for the whole day and be totally inspired. Well, I've heard of talking to your plants, <laughs> but that was shouting at them. <laughs> Do you find that's effective? Do you know what? I was pretty frustrated because I'd been watching that Agapanthus for weeks before the filming. I knew the film was coming up. I was thinking, come on, explode <laughs> like a firework. And it just didn't. And uh, as for my Rebecca, yeah, they got a slap around the back of the legs as well. Oh, well. They just weren't there. So where does that passion for gardening come from? 
Well, I think it came from being born into it, to be honest. Uh, my grandparents, uh, my parents, uh, uh, my uh, father-in-law, um, you know, they were all massively into gardening. And I think when you're surrounded by it the whole time, you've got no choice, as I'm sure your kids are going to eventually be into gardening as well. We're sitting in a really colourful garden, and I noticed actually in the film that yours is also quite colourful. Is that something very important to you? I was naturally drawn to this one. It's fantastic. It's, it's full of colour. And then, totally by coincidence, I found out that the designer of this garden is a young guy, I think about 17 years old, and he's dyslexic, as I am. I think um, when you are dyslexic, um, the academic side of your brain might not necessarily work as well as it, it should do, uh, but your creative side of the brain works mm. overtime. And you really get that when you see here. <laughs> and also, quite good, he's not afraid to take the mick out of this as well. When you see the wooden plaques over there, he's got sentences all spelt wrong with the wrong words. And I think that's great. <laughs> it's lovely. So what sort of plants do you respond to? What really draw you in? Well, uh, I suppose the ones that bring back childhood memories, like the smell of lilac on a lilac tree, uh, hypericums, that beautiful bright colour, and lavater growing across the wall garden of, of my mum and dad's garden. Mm -hmm. But um, I suppose now I've been able to venture myself a little bit more, I really like the ones that give height, like here, the agapanthus. Because I'm small, it's like I'm in Lilliput. It's great. <laughs> so you've got these, you've got verbenas that I love, hollyhocks, um, anything with a bit of height that moves gently in the breeze really offset all the bedding plants as well. So I love height. Absolutely. And we'll be getting Dom's personal view on the show a bit later in the programme.